Hello everyone and welcome back to Bulls Mountain Homestead. My name is Wendy and today I'm going to show you how to make pickled pepperoncinis. These are what pepperoncinis look like and this is only the second year that we've been growing them. I believe these are the ones that they use at the Olive Garden whenever they hand out their salads. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you a very simple recipe to pickle these. Make sure that you do have a pair of gloves even though these are not a really hot type of pepper, after handling a whole basket of them, that residue can rub off on your fingers and they can burn or if you touch your eye or whatnot, it can cause irritation. So make sure you wear a pair of gloves. And the only thing we're going to do is we're just going to cut the tops off of each one of these. And that's all the cutting we're going to do to each of these pepperoncinis. With our gloves on, we are going to cut the tops off of each one and discard it. Now what you can do if you want is take and make a slit just down one side and that will help all of the brine go into the pepper. That is an option if you want to do that. But each pepper, just cut the top off. And like I said, if you want to make a slit, just make a slit. Continue this until all of your peppers have been cut. Once you have all of your pepperoncinis cut, you want to take your garlic and take the outer skin off and peel them. And then you're going to want one clove of garlic for each jar that you're using. So my canner holds eight, so I'm just going to peel eight cloves of garlic. I am going to give you the ingredients so that way you can write them down to have them on hand. Whenever you're canning, make sure that you do have your ingredients before you get started because trust me, I have canned before where I've ran out of lemon juice, where I've ran out of garlic and I think I have it and then I don't. So make sure you have everything before you get started. So to make the brine, you're going to need 8 cups of water, 8 cups of white vinegar, 2 third cup of pickling salt and make sure you use the pickling salt a half a cup of granulated sugar, and a half a cup of black peppercorns. You're going to put one clove of garlic into each jar, and you're going to add pickle crisp to each jar. The pickle crisp just keeps your peppers crunchy. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to the kitchen and make our brine. Get yourself a good stock pot because this is going to make a lot of brine, okay? If you do not use all of your brine, do not discard it because I will show you what to do with that. So in here already I have 8 cups of water. I'm going to add to that my 8 cups of vinegar. There's 4. And that makes 8. We will be adding our salt. So I use Mrs. Wages Pickling and Canning Salt. So here is one third and two thirds. To this, we're going to add a half a cup of granulated sugar, half a cup of sugar. Give this a good stir, and then we're going to put this on the stove and we're going to bring it to a boil. Once your brine reaches a boil and it starts boiling, you're going to want to boil that for one minute. Then turn it back onto like a lower temperature and then keep it warm because everything is going to be hot. We're going to do hot jars, hot liquid, and if you don't keep your jars hot, you have the potential for them to crack. I have just taken my jars out of the water bath canner and make sure you use a rag to hold these jars to fill them because they are extremely, extremely hot. I only use one glove to fill these jars with the hot peppers because I'm using my other hand to hold on to the jar. Into each jar we're going to add one eighth of a teaspoon of your pickle crisp, one tablespoon of peppercorns, then start I always tilt my jar to the side whenever I put my peppers in and you want to pack these in really tight because what's going to happen is they're going to float once you add your water. So 
you can see so you can see I'm kind of laying it to the side and packing them in that way you're gonna do this with each and every jar until they are full about halfway through filling I take one clove of garlic and put it in my jar and then continue this process until all of your jars are filled once your jars are full get your funnel and you're going to want to ladle your brine your hot brine into each one of these jars and you're looking for a quarter of an inch of headspace with each jar take a knife or a bubbling tool and you can see I don't know if you can see that or not the bubbles will come up and you don't want any bubbles in your jar because those are little air pockets and you want to get rid of all of those so each jar that you have make sure that you take your knife and run it down along the sides of each one and you can see the water level dropped on this so then just go ahead and add more water till you get to your one fourth inch headspace once you have poured your brine into your jars you're going to want to take a wet paper towel and go around the rims of each one to get any of that brine off of the rim and this ensures that there's not going to be any stickiness on there that's going to prevent a good seal so do this with each jar and then once it is wiped down take your lid put it on your ring finger tight that's it my canner is full and I have a good two inches of water over top of my jars so once I'm gonna put the lid on it and once it comes to a rolling boil I'm gonna set my timer for 10 minutes now for my altitude I have to do an adjustment so for me it's gonna be 15 so make sure you check your altitude level and adjust accordingly I do have some leftover brine so what I'm doing is heating that back up to a boil and I have a jar of banana peppers that there weren't enough to actually can but there were some pretty large ones in there that needed picked so I just sliced them up threw some onion peppercorn and crushed garlic in there and then I'm just gonna put the rest of the brine on this after it reaches a boil let it come down to about room temperature and then you can put it in your fridge I would probably wait a couple days to try to eat these because the flavor won't be in them if you try right away so just give those a couple days and then that'll taste really good we were able to get eight pints of pickled pepperoncinis. these are great on sandwiches and even a Mississippi pot roast so if you've never tried that look that up and that's a great way to use these so thank you so much for watching and have a great day